Organisations falling within the scope of the Blue Card system are required to develop and implement child and youth risk management strategies, which address eight minimum requirements. This video will guide you through the seventh of the minimum requirements, which is the requirement to have risk management plans for high risk activities and special events. You may be wondering, what is a high risk activity or a special event? The answer to this question will be different for every organisation. A high risk activity or special event, due to their nature, will require extra planning to ensure that appropriate control measures are implemented to manage the identified risks. What your organisation deems to be a high risk activity or special event will be dependent on the nature of the activities or services which your organisation provides. Criteria or examples should be provided in your plan to guide an assessment of when an activity should be considered high risk and therefore would warrant a plan. For example, you may wish to consider whether the activity or event involves the participation of volunteers or people who are external to your organisation, is to take place at an external venue or destination with a large amount of people and or other hazards, for example, involving water hazards such as ponds, lakes or pools, or is to take place overnight or is for a lengthy period of time. It is important to note that these are just some examples of the types of things which you might consider to assist in determining if an activity or event is high risk. So, why does your organisation need to have plans for high-risk activities and special events? Well, forward planning to identify risks and implement strategies can assist to reduce the possibility of children being harmed. It is important to recognise that people who seek to deliberately harm children must have or create the opportunity to do so. These opportunities can be reduced by developing specific policies to manage high-risk activities and special events. So how should you go about drafting these plans? You should first identify examples of what your organisation deems to be high-risk activities or special events. You should then draft a plan for each activity or event. Each plan should establish the context of the activity or event, including the nature of the activity and your objectives in conducting it, the environment or location of the activity, and the people involved in the activity, including children and young people. It should identify the specific risks, and it should identify the control measures that are already in place and whether additional controls are required. Each plan should, at a minimum, address the following issues if relevant. Supervision of children and ratios of adults to children. Transportation. Toileting and change room procedures. Managing medications and allergies. Managing illness and injury. Emergency procedures. Any risks presented by the physical environment. Supervision of volunteers. Accommodation requirements. And relevant consent forms, including emergency contact details. So how do you practically do this? How can you turn this into a plan? Well, all you have to do to develop your plan is consider six steps for each activity or event, which are Step 1. Describe the activity Step 2. Identify the risks Step 3. Analyse the risks Step 4. Evaluate the risks Step 5. Manage the risks and reassess And Step 6. Review We will now work through the example of taking children on an excursion to the park. Step 1 is to describe the activity. What is the activity and what is the purpose? Where is the activity going to take place? Think about who is involved in the activity. Is it parents? Staff? Children? 
Think of all the elements of the activity from beginning to end. For our example of taking children on an excursion, the activity could be described as On a Monday, four children, aged 2, 3, 5 and 7, will be taken to the park by one family daycare educator. They will be at the park for one hour. The mode of transportation is driving. The park is bordered by a main road and has public toilets and a pond. The park is usually busy. There is an adjoining dog park. Step two is to identify the risks. We need to consider how might a child be harmed. The risks which you're identifying in this plan are different to workplace health and safety processes, which generally consider environment and equipment risks. These are important and should definitely be considered. However, they are generally part of a separate assessment. The risks that you want to focus on are the risks of physical, emotional or psychological harm which may occur to a child. As with all the elements of your risk management strategy, it is a good idea to consider involving and brainstorming with parents, staff and, if appropriate, children. You should consider where the risks may come from. For example, the environment or location, an employee or volunteer from your organisation, other children from your organisation, someone outside your organisation, and or themselves. If we focus on the example of the excursion to the park, a sample of the risks could be Children could be hurt in a car accident. Children could suffer dehydration or sunburn. Children could injure themselves on play equipment. Children could be harmed by another park user. A child might get lost. Children could drown in the pond. A dog from the adjoining park could bite a child. It is important to note that this list of risks is not exhaustive. It is merely a selection of examples that would be relevant to this activity. Step three is to analyze the risks. In this step, you should consider how likely is it that the risk will occur and what would happen if the risk did occur. Likelihood can be determined on a scale of rare to almost certain. Consequence can be measured on a scale of insignificant to critical. We will analyse the first risk identified, which is that children could be hurt in a car accident. The likelihood of this happening would be rare. However, if this did happen, then the consequences would be moderate to critical. The fourth step involves evaluating the level of risks, which will be dependent on the answers you gave in step three. To assist, you can utilise a risk analysis matrix. We will continue to use the risk that children are hurt in a car accident as an example. It was determined that the likelihood of this happening would be rare and the consequence was moderate to critical. Therefore, using the risk matrix, the risk level is low to moderate. You should continue to use this process for all identified risks. Step five is managing the risk. Risk management involves looking at the options available to you and making a plan so that you can reduce the risks and be prepared. You must consider what control measures your organisation can adopt to reduce the risks. For our example, the risk could be managed by ensuring the vehicle is roadworthy, ensuring the staff member has a valid driver's licence, and ensuring that the children are in approved child restraints. If you assess that a risk is still highly likely to occur and the outcome would end in harm to a child, then you will need to rethink continuing with the activity. The sixth and final step is review. Ongoing review is essential to ensure that the risk management plan your organisation develops for your high risk activity or special event is effective. Reviewing controls and responsibilities can be useful for future planning. You should identify in your plan who will review the risk management plan after the event or activity. To 
further assist you in developing and implementing effective child and youth risk management strategies, a toolkit which is available on the risk management page of the Blue Card Services website has been developed to provide information and guidance on the eight minimum requirements. Remember, safe service environments don't just happen. They require ongoing planning, commitment and maintenance. Thank you for taking the time to learn about this requirement of child and youth risk management strategies. We hope you found this video useful and we encourage you to watch the remaining videos on offer from the Blue Card Services Learning Portal.